Uh, more than likely, I'll be on it. Okay. One. And this will be recorded. Everybody, uh, thank you for getting on the on the call tonight. Tonight, we will be discussing how to create your own bank. Um, I think this is a great uh, topic right now, especially in this low interest rate environment. I think this is a really good talk about how you actually create your own bank. I think this is going to be very vital. I personally use it for me, for my business, and my family. So I think this is a great talk that we need to have tonight. Uh, especially in this low interest rate environment, what we can foresee seeing getting played out in the future. And I think this is a great way to take advantage of opportunities as we see fit down the road. But before we get started, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. Uh, first, I want to introduce myself, uh, Jason Matthews. I'm President and CEO of Matthews Financial and Insurance Solutions, author of the best selling book, The Age of Self Reliance, um, and also President of the Urban Financial Services Coalition, San Francisco Bay Area Chapter. Tandaway, you might like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hi, everyone. My name is Tandaway Kano, financial advisor at Matthews Financial and Insurance Solution. Uh, I specialize in helping individuals and small businesses reach their wealth potential and to really figure out what that is. So I'm extremely excited for this topic tonight. All right, I'll go ahead and go. My name is Jasper Smith, also known as Mr. Bill Wealth. I serve as the director of disruption for a financial empowerment initiative called the Bill Wealth Movement. I, like Jason, am also an author. Uh, I wrote a book entitled The Bill Wealth Challenge, and it's all set to change the way you think and feel about money, all in an effort to make sure you can achieve financial peace of mind. And so I'm excited about tonight's topic as well. It's very timely as I just had a client meeting today and I was talking about this concept. So Jason, I'm looking forward to seeing if I missed any of the main talking points, uh, but excited that we uh, are covering this topic tonight. Definitely. So um, where did this banking concept from? I didn't invent it. This, this idea has actually been around quite a lot, has been around a lot. Uh, R. Nelson Nash is the father of what we call infinite banking, uh, being your own bank. Uh, there's so many different names of it. Um, but if you ever read his book, he has a couple of great books. The most famous one is Becoming Your Own Banker um, is a great book about it. There's another book called Cashflow that he didn't write that talked about. But this concept has been around for a while and a long period of time. Um, and here's a few of the books. If you ever want to go on Amazon, um, get the books. And I, I think this concept, we think about it for our own personal use uh, and, and idea. But in actuality, a lot of the banks actually use the power of life insurance to be, be, have that as their own bank. And if you look at a lot of the major banks, they actually use it more than a lot of other assets that we come to realize or think that they own. Oftentimes on the top of what we call tier one liquid capital is life insurance for them oftentimes. So let's dig in deep and really understand how banking works and then how this and how the strategy works in. So traditionally how banking is work, you go ahead and put your assets, you give what, to the bank what we call deposits to the bank. And at the same time, so that the bank receives your deposits, and once they receive those deposits, what they usually do is they have to do something with those deposits. They just don't let that money sit there. What they usually do is they loan out that money. They can loan it out for business, for the businesses, for different business needs that a business owner might need to grow and expand their business. It might be for a car. It might be for a home. It might be for college. So the, so the banking main thing is to take in deposits, let that money grow and multiply, and at the same time, go ahead and loan out that money to for whatever particular needs that somebody has or wants or business has based off the credit, credit, credit worthiness of that person, that business, or that entity. But right now, we're in a very hard place as far as our saving deposit with banks because we are in a low interest rate environment. Uh, and we've been in a low interest rate environment for a while now. And with that low interest rate environment, it is great for people who are trying to borrow money, but people who are great at savers are getting a huge hit on it. Right now, if you go to your bank, you're lucky you're getting pretty much 0% at 0.03%. So let's say you give 10 grand to a bank. That's only $3 for a year, 25 cents, 25 cents a month. So what I want to do and what this idea is before we really get started is I want you to have an open mind, get rid of all preconceived notions 
and really think about how, what are different ideas and strategies that I can have, have my money work harder for me, where I get a higher interest rate, my money's still safe and, I, and it's liquid and I can still borrow from it. So let's look, let's look a little bit deeper into how this can be used for a real estate investor, a regular uh, real estate, somebody who has a family and, and think about this process. So when, banks, when we traditionally bank do bank financing for real estate, if you're an investor or you're an individual who's trying to buy your homes, what we usually do is we go ahead and we borrow that this even line right here, that straight line where we see even, it says that we have no growth and no debt. But once we put that house in, we have that red line that goes down and that is our debt from the home. And we pay monthly payments over and over and over again until we get back even on that debt. And then we borrow another home in our house. Maybe we have one child at first or our first home or our starter home. Then we buy another house and get big and we go back in debt and we pay it off. And then we go further in debt. And this is the game that we do for the, our entirety as we purchase homes for real estate, cars, or any other assets. But today we're just focusing on just real estate right now as we talk as this example. But let's say you don't, you don't want to borrow money. You want to take the banks out of it because you don't want to keep borrowing interest from the bank, we can do self-finance. And if you look at this line, this blue line, it shows that we put money into it, we're saving and saving money, we buy a home and right at that point, we're back down to even or zero dollars. And then we save, 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 we're back down to zero or even dollars if we're self-financed. And we're doing this over and over and over again if we're self-financed. But hey, what happened if we could put together a way where we can allow our money to grow is getting 0% and we can allow that money to multiply and we have a multiplier effect with those funds. And, and in the ideal great situation, what we want to do is we want our money to totally accumulate. And then we want our money to grow with the power of compound interest. And we all heard about the power of compound interest from Albert Einstein. So imagine if you kept saving and saving and saving, your money continues to grow even if you borrow from it, your money is still growing. And that's what we're talking about today. So when you're, if, as we accumulate money and we're getting an interest rate and we're starting to see compound interest, imagine if we borrow money from it and our money continues to grow even as we borrow from it. And we continue to borrow from it over and over and over again, while the money that we currently originally say is still growing and compounding, it would be a great idea and strategy that we all would love to do. Now, once we do this growth and we want it to grow, there's a couple of things we want to avoid for we, we can truly take advantage of compound interest. One is we don't want to pay taxes. Oftentimes when we have, uh, we have some type of growth in the stock market or any type of way, we will have to pay some type of taxes, either income, ta income taxes or capital gain taxes. Also, during this growth period, we don't want it to feel the effect of a downturn in the stock market, bond market, or any other downturn where the money we grow can actually lose benefits from it. We want to actually do the exact opposite. We want our money to be able to take advantage of any downturn. Now, the great way we could do that is by using the strategy called being, uh, being, uh, building your own bank, BYOB or infinite banking. And here's two examples of, of what we're referring to. One example is a typical person who's an excellent saver, Samuel Saver. And the other person is Benjamin Banker, who's banking on himself. So Samuel Saver, he, he always says he saves, then he buys something, and then he has, then he has zero dollars, and he's continuing to save over and over and over again. And then he buys something, then he's saving and saving and building it up, and then he's spinning it down to zero and he's going up. While Benjamin Baker, Banker, what he does is he saves at one time, he buys something, but the money that he saves is continuing to grow because he's borrowing the money against himself while his money is continuing to take advantage of compounding interest. And the way that he's doing that is taking advantage of leveraging cash value life insurance to take advantage of being his own bank. The great thing about cash value life insurance is if you, if you design it correctly, you could have it be your own bank where you put the money in, the money grows in compounds, but when you borrow from it, your money actually continues to grow compoundingly while you borrow from it. And you, and you could put the money back as needed 
and actually oftentimes lower interest rates than you actually get from the bank. Now, this concept we guys might think is new or you might not have heard of it, but we had quite a few companies have taken advantage of it historically. There's a famous story about Walt Disney who has taken advantage of it. McDonald's, Jason Pitties, and Stanford University, which just a few of many companies who have used this concept over and over and over again. Now, let's look at this and, and let's say look at this. So we're going to talk about how to be your own banker. And row number one shows you the growth of it per year. And we started off with how much we contributed in year one, which is 200,000. Be a, the next uh, column is, is your the draw. Next slide. The next slide. Right? There you go. Perfect. So thank you about, thank you. So we're, let's show you how this actually works. So with your banking, we're allowing your money to grow a compound. And the right column is banking with life insurance, using life insurance as your bank. The column to your left is this, if you simply save your own cash in the current rate of market. Now, if we simply just save our cash just in the bank over a period of time, we're only generating about $290,000 and some change. But if we use the power of life insurance, which have higher interest rates than what we're getting at the bank and we could borrow from it, we're actually building up to build up to $540,000 worth of savings in this example. Now, the good thing is the interest you also get on top of this is a death benefit on top of it. So the good thing about this is this. Let's say you have life insurance. You grow your, you build up some cash. The cash you borrow is goes against the death benefit where you borrow it and using the death benefit as collateral. If something happens to you, all they will do is subtract the cash that you borrow from it from the death benefit upon death. Now, if you decide to put the money back into it so make it grow faster, all you can do that anytime necessary. So let me give you an example of a client. She bought a home, or she bought a condo, a rental property in Houston. She brought the money outside that policy to purchase the home, her condo in Houston. She fixed up the home. She never paid back the loan at that time. But once she got tenants, she put the money back inside of it. When the tenants left, she didn't put the money back into it. But the money that she originally put into it was continually to compound and grow. And that is the power of cash value life insurance and using it as your own bank. Now, I just want to see if anybody might have any questions regarding this idea or concept. I think one thing, uh, maybe you can talk about the tax-free aspect of it, um, especially when it's growing within the policy. Definitely. So with life insurance, when we're taking the money out, we're not taking out the cash plus the growth of the policy out as cash. What we're doing is taking out the original amount as cash, the money you put inside of it. And any gains that are happening within the side of it, which are usually based off of dividends or tied to an index, we're borrowing the money just like a home equity line of credit. And because we borrow borrowing the money is not considered Income is a loan, so we are taking advantage of the tax-free benefits. And then once we pass away, whatever the death benefit is, is also going to be tax-free for our heirs, our in our heirs, and whoever we decide to be the beneficiary at that time, which is a great plus and perk for it. And then another thing is, what would you, I guess, also say to somebody who? maybe the example that you use for someone who's a huge saver and they just have all their money in savings in comparison to using this concept. Yeah, so what I usually tell people is you want to always have some type of liquidity just in case something happens where if, you, if your car breaks down today, you can pull that money out tomorrow. Um, you can pull that money out today if something happens. Let's say your car breaks down the side of the road. Last week I got a tire. I need to get it fixed immediately. So I always want to keep some liquid cash inside my savings account. There's a time and a place for it. But anything excessive outside of my three months of savings, usually, I, will, I want to use the life insurance as an additional savings vehicle. As I know if I put the money there, it's going to work harder for me. The money's going to be liquid, so I don't have to wait till I'm 59 and a half like you would in your 401k plan or your IRA. There's no rules if credit gets tight and I can't borrow money like we see in 08. But what's going to be, but at that time, you could always have touch it and you could take advantage of it. So in 08, when the financial crisis hit, 
when the credit market got tight, where we, banks were not lending out money, money, where people had their credit limits got cut in half, which I've seen one of my clients. You could have taken full advantage of that period of time when houses were going foreclosure, people didn't have cash, and you go buy those properties dirt cheap by pulling up, borrowing money for your life insurance and paying for those properties when everything else was hitting the fan and there was blood in the streets. No, I think those are all really great examples, especially uh, two things that I wanted to add. One is that last year, we saw that a lot of banks had restrictions as far as even being able to borrow money from your home, um, the amount that they required for down payment. Um, and that all changed just because of the environment. If you're then using your life insurance policy, you, don't, you have more, a lot more flexibility with it. And the other thing I wanted to add is, especially with the Biden administration, we're also going to see a difference in capital gains taxes. So if you are someone who is uh, heavily invested in the stock market, which is great, it's also good to diversify uh, your portfolio and have something that uh, will allow you to use your money tax free as well. Yeah, definitely. And we ever and we have seen it. And I remember in 08, 09, when I was um, in 2008, 2009, I don't care how great your credit. You could have had 800 credit score. The banks were not loaning out money, right? And so you did the right thing. You've been a great saver. You wanted to borrow money. You want to borrow. But the banks simply, because of the credit market of the whole world got tight, um, banks would not lend you out money. But with life insurance, you just have to fill out a simple form. You borrow the money and you should get the money in a couple of days. And there ain't no question about your credit worthiness, about your business. And so if your business is tight, you can still borrow those funds. Well, oftentimes when banks only want to lend out money when things are good, not during hard times. And we even seen it yesterday when we hear this whole thing about evergreen, uh, evergreen in China, about how China might get tighter on their credit. And people asking in China, is this the next Lehman Brothers for China right now? So I think this is a great way to start thinking that credit might not always be available, no matter what your, no matter um, your situation and how good you are and how steward of your money responsibilities are. So you should look at some alternative places that one, your money's going to work harder for you. Two, you don't have to ask the, the uh, ask about your credit worthiness, um, and you also have your money liquid. Unlike your 401k plan or your IRA, because if you borrow from there, you get laid off in the downturn. You only have so many days to pay back. If not, you have a huge tax situation and tax burden at your front steps, and you don't want to see that. Also, there's limitations if you borrow from a retirement account, how much you can actually borrow, which is only 50 grand. But let's see if you have an opportunity, you have 100000 $200,000 opportunity, and you build that up. There's no limits on how much you can borrow, which is a huge thing as well. Yeah, I was going to just chime in, Jason, just a personal story. Like I've leveraged my life insurance policy for some business ventures and it's a loan I know I never have to pay back. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm living proof of how people have leveraged this, this tool. And what I find is nobody's talking to us about it. And so I had a conversation about this topic in a client meeting today, actually, and both of the both of my clients were like, why has nobody ever told me this before? <laughs> and I was like, well, who are you getting financial advice from? You know, and so I think we're sometimes limited in, in what we can do as possibilities for our clients when you may be just siloed and you only see the product. You know, so we, we find that sometimes people don't explore these creative ideas in an effort to assist them in whatever capacity they need. But I always tell my personal story that really helps to solidify this as an opportunity. It's not something that people jump at right away because they've never heard it before. It's like, ah, it's too good to be true. Nah, it's not how it works. And so I love the slide around, you know, the large companies, household names that you showed in the presentation because don't believe me, I'm just one guy. But if you know those names that you show on those slides, uh, hopefully that will sell them on the idea that doesn't mean they're going to do it but it is another option that more people i wish would, would gravitate towards right definitely and there's a couple of precursors i also want to say as well a couple of things this for somebody to do this one you have to be healthy 
If you're not healthy, this might not be designed for you. But guess what? Even if you're not healthy, what we do need is somebody who might be related to you or have an insurable interest on it with you. And so you can always insure somebody else while you own the policy. So even if you're not the healthiest person, we just need to find somebody who's healthy. So I'll give you a guys example. I remember about three years ago, I did this idea. I had two sisters that were both in their 70s. They received an inheritance. They got an inheritance. They sold. Their mother place was 97 years old. And they wanted to do this for them, for their family as their family business. So what we did was since both of them were, their, were elder, they're both in their 70s, and we wasn't sure if they qualified, we actually put the insurance on their daughter for it. And they made the rules, no matter what the situation is, if they're living or not, for the policy. So they decided that the money that was in it could be used for weddings, if somebody get married in the family, for family businesses, or if somebody want to purchase some real estate or real estate investment or a business. And they made a criteria. It's just not you, hey, I want to start a business today. They said, no, in the rules was you have to put together a business plan and then we'll loan out the money. And that was the rule for the family. Even if they're here or not, this plan of having a family bank is going to live on for the next 50 to 100 years if they're here or not, which is a great thing. So just a great idea just to think about. No, I think those are both uh, some great examples, especially when you've seen it and, and have actual clients that have gone through this process. And I know it's new and people always have questions. So I think it's definitely important to have the education piece of it and have someone walk you through step by step, because again, it's a pretty new concept as well. So uh, we'll go ahead again. If you all have questions, please feel free to put that in the chat. Um, otherwise, I guess we are, are we going to go ahead and uh, wrap things up? Yeah, definitely. Um, if you guys have any last questions, like you said, we can, uh, we can answer those for you. If you guys like a consultation, please give a call to Tandaway, me or Jasper. Tandaway, we like to give them your number or your email. They're the best way they, they can get in touch with you if you like. Absolutely. I will put my, I'll put my email and my phone number in the chat uh, for those who attended tonight. Definitely. Uh, Jasper, he put his email in it already as well. So if you guys have any information about this, is is in the email as well, which would be fantastic for you guys. And you notice the jokes are in that link I gave you. It's in the bottom on the very top link. There's all these jokes for insurance jokes as well, which are fantastic. Um, all right. Well, I do want to add a uh, thank you, everyone who showed up this evening to our second night of, of Life Insurance Awareness Week mini series. So this week we'll be doing different topics related to life insurance uh, and just to make sure that you, you all are educated about what we have to offer. And in addition, um, if you have any questions, information, um, please feel free to contact us directly. Do you want to, uh, also Jasper, do you want to tell us what we have to look forward to tomorrow? Yeah, I, I get the chance of speaking tomorrow. It's going to be great, so you should come. That's all I'm going to say. It, it's <laughs> All these topics are, are, are so important, so I'm happy to you know, talk about uh, tax-free retirement is the topic or the theme of tomorrow's presentation. So hopefully you all will consider joining us again tomorrow night and yours truly will be serving as the speaker and just, you know, giving you all the information that you may have never received. You know, we unfortunately know, I'll say us three as practitioners, we, we come across these ideas and you just want to keep sharing them. Like these are legitimate ways that people can leverage this tool called life insurance for a variety of purposes. And it's just sometimes if we can get it out of our minds that it's not just about dying. You know, it, yes, there's a component of that, but it's not just death insurance and life insurance is so much more. It's actually for the living. And that's what this whole mini series has primarily been about is, you know, shedding some light on that reality is that many people, myself included, have leveraged life insurance to do some incredible things. 
Fantastic. Well, without further ado, we are going to go ahead and shut things down. Again, if you have further questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and also join us the rest of the week for the other topics that we have coming in. So thank you for everyone who chose to share their evening with us. We look forward to seeing you later this week. Thank you.